So this is my lab. Uh, we have a many human and robot, and we are working this for uh, more than 15 years. So while we are doing this research, is uh, there is no uh, OSRF, no Wheel of Garage, and the uh, initiative to uh, open source is very limited in the uh, robotics area. So, but after that, I joined the Wheel of Garage PR2 program, and uh, the main concern for us is how to integrate the system that we built the last 10 years or last 20 years with the new open source uh, software. And this could happen to many, uh, how can I say, uh, robotics lab, as well as uh, companies who, going to who want to use ROS, but they, uh, they use usually has uh, their own systems. So I think my experience in uh, integrating this kind of robots with the ROS could be very useful to the lab people and also the industrial people. So I'm going to talk about such uh, topics today. So this is a history of the our, our lab. So this is very common in uh, Japanese laboratory. So we have a professor here. The professor is Professor Inaba. And I'm an uh, assistant, associate professor there. And we have many uh, lecturer and uh, assistant professor and postdocs. So currently, our lab is consists of 40 people. And we use we everyone is working on the robotics. So lab itself is started about uh, 1980. So at that time, uh, we only have uh, one arm and one camera. And now we have uh, more than 20 robots, I think. So the lab is a robot is growing. So but. In our laboratory, what we are interested in, in is a complete system. So every student is working on not that specific topic, but they are always try to integrate everything. So from uh, control, perception, planning, manipulation, and uh, and I think the recent topic in our laboratory is we joined the PR2 program around uh, 2010. And after that, several postdocs started new companies. Uh, we have two major startups. Uh, one is a, a Shaft, maybe you know that. And the other one is a Mujin company, which is, developed, uh, which is created by uh, Rosen Diankov of OpenWave. So, and this is my uh, PhD, one of the PhD uh, work. Uh, it's about uh, 10 years ago. And we want to integrate everything. And uh, I think this kind of system is very common in nowadays. But at that time, uh, I worked very hard to integrate the uh, real robot with a simulated environment and also uh, integrate 3D vision systems and create portable humanoid robots and try to uh, I can say, uh, give you a one robot for each student. And this robot, uh, the main concept of this robot is called a uh, remote brain robot, which is uh, uh, proposed by Professor Inaba in 1993. And the idea of this robot is to uh, separate the robot body and brain. So if he built this system today, maybe we call this robot, this system as a, a cloud robotics. But at that time, we, there is no cloud, cloud uh, you know, world. So we call it the remote brain system. And the, I think the main benefit of this system is to separate the brain and body. So usually we have to create the body and brain together, but we can improve the body itself as well as uh, uh, improve the brain itself. So this will to uh, create a many kind of the humanoid robot at that time. So student at this time, it's before us and I, uh, they create maybe two or three uh, robots for each student. So this is some uh, very interesting behavior of the robot. And since we separate the body and brain, uh, we use the same brain, that means a, a high level software, to each robot, to different type of the robot. So. In other words, we can say that our software is to designed to be generalized to uh, or independent from the uh, body shape or the structure of the body or number of the joint of degree, degree, degree of the freedom. So 
throughout this research, is we are able to create some uh, generalized uh, robot uh, research uh, environment. And we call that, we are based on the uh, RISP system uh, because the system is designed in 1986. And uh, he, he also uh, graduated from the uh, our JSK laboratory. And uh, of course, at that time, there is no Python and Ruby and the Perl and maybe C++. So I think the RISP is the only one choice for doing the AI research. But the I think the most interesting part of this uh, uh, language is that uh, he thinks that 3D shape of the model of the robot and the environment play a very important role in the robotics researches. And he tried to extend the solid modeler that can be uh, very easy to use from the uh, high level symbolic processing systems. So this is a, a main feature of the uh, uh, use of this uh, language. Uh, if you use a MATLAB, you can use a, a matrix or a vector as a one instance or one object. But in these languages, you can also use a, a, a line, edge, plane, polygon, face, hole, or a body as an instance. So we can, you can manipulate these uh, actual uh, 3D uh, geometrical representations. Okay, so I try to show some live demo. So thanks to uh, Wero's very nice uh, building system, the building system, uh, we are able to create a very nice uh, package for the our uh, RISP languages. So So here, for example, um, we can create the cube model, like make cube. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see. And uh, we can create also cylinder. And uh, then you can create this kind of uh, structure. We usually use this for the uh, model, the camera model of the robot. And uh, for the demonstration, we I try to. change the <coughs> orientation of the <coughs> here, like this. Um, calculate a new object using the body minus. So body minus can calculate the uh, subtraction from one object to another, and then you can create this kind of very strange uh, object like this. After that, uh, I think this is what we usually do in the human robot, is to find some faces. And confirm that where it is. Here. And 
also you can calculate the centroid of the face. So this, if you know about the human robot, this could be very useful when you want to calculate the center of mass or the center of the pressure from the uh, foot soles. Okay, so. And by doing so, uh, we create all the robots that we, that we have in the laboratory in our RISP systems. So here is a list of the robot, and the motion of the uh, robot is converted from the one um, BVH uh, motion capture data. Because uh, as I told before, uh, in about uh, 20 or 15 years ago, we have a lot of, lot of robots, and we have uh, tried to create some common interface for a different type of the robot. So this is what how we are able to uh, convert uh, one uh, b motion capture data to any type of the robot like this. And uh, here is the list of the robot. And we also model the environment uh, in our laboratory. So each time we buy a new furniture in the laboratory, uh, we I ask students to create the this type of the uh, 3D curve in the list language. And here is some example, maybe I'm not uh, going to show in the live demo, but uh, so here you can see that uh, create the robot, instance of the robot like this. And here is how to we uh, create the motion. So this cube is uh, made by here and the just to translate like this and uh, try to uh, solve the inverse kinematics for the right arm. So it's very easy to create a motion. So this is a, a system that we are using. So of course we use a RISP in the top level, but uh, in order to control a robot, we need some uh, real-time layer. And so we call it a brain as a RISP layer and nervous systems as a real-time layer. So this is a real-time loop plug-in architecture uh, independent, sorry, independent from a robot body, and we put some sequence balancer, uh, such kind of the plugin function as a plugin, and we also uh, put the uh, visual modules uh, as a plugin, and also we create the hardware abstraction layer HAL, uh, so that the same system can be used for both real robot and virtual robot. So this structure is very important because. Uh, after that, we are using the different types of the robot systems, but we always use the same brain, but uh, changes this uh, uh, controller layer. So this is some example uh, using the systems. So here, robot see around the environment and create the uh, 2D map and uh, uh, solve the A star to get the uh, pass like this, and uh, run the walking motion. So after, while, while the robot is working, some power, some force is applied to the, this uh, pole, and uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, pulling, and robot uh, look around again and plan the um, pass to the goal uh, positions. So uh, after that, uh, Japanese government started the uh, HRP project, uh, which is from 1998 to 2002. And first they use a uh, uh, Honda's uh, prototype three robot but after that, uh, they created uh, their own robot. And the nice thing about this project is that usually a uh, national project uh, lasts for, for example, three or five years, but after that, there is nothing. They just write some paper and patent, and that's the end. But in pr this project, after these five years, a company named the Kawada is able to sell this robot. So I think this is the first a life-sized human robot that uh, people can buy. And uh, we buy this robot in 2002, and uh, after that, uh, I was at that time I was just uh, got a PhD and start postdoc, so I have a lot of time on uh, working on the HRP2 robot. And another nice thing of this uh, robot is that 
uh, if you buy this robot, uh, you already have a walking controller. So you don't have to care about the walking or balancing, uh, such a dynamic uh, things, but you can uh, concentrate on more higher level. So in that system, they use uh, a corba based open HRP uh, systems. And the important part for me is they have a, a, a motion uh, control system called HRP SIF. And the uh, writer, uh, author of these systems and the NABA system that I shown before is the same guy. So I know how he, he thinks and uh, it's easy for me to uh, understand this uh, motion control systems. And so this is how he connect the HRP motion control system with the brain system. So the structure itself is uh, for me, it's very, very similar to the what I did uh, before. So this is why I think our lab is very, uh, how can I say, uh, easy to uh, start using the HRP2 robot. And uh, we had a lot of, lot of experiment during that time. So here is, oh, this is the first experiment. So of course, we use, uh, this is a risk uh, environment and we plan everything in the RISP environment and then uh, send to the real robot. And these, for example, two-step planning or uh, uh, this uh, planning uh, is already, uh, how can I say, uh, programmed or researched in the small robot. So we just change the robot model to a small robot to the large robot and uh, so this is first our experiment and the nice thing about this pic uh, video is uh, people is laughing and very comfortable with the robot because usually before that uh, when students create their own human robot they are always very uh, care or worry about breaking robot so usually people is how can I say scare the robot very often very much but because this robot we just buy that so people are very very rely on this robot so this is what we do in the, uh, about 10 years, we do a lot of experiment. And uh, something I, uh, we do that for uh, research, a PhD uh, result, and something we do that just for a farm. So this is nailing. And also <laughs> this is a appraiser uh, uh, instrument. Another interesting uh, video is, uh, yeah. So robot drives the self uh, oil, oil chair. Because we want to, uh, at, at this video, we want to uh, uh, record the sensor data of the uh, humans who are driving the wheelchair. But uh, we found that human robot is very good because it contains everything, the batteries, computers, many sensors, vision sensors, IMU, gyro sensors. So this is kind of the uh, collection of the center sensors. So we just put the uh, human robot on, on the uh, wheelchair and uh, collect the data like this. And here is another example. So this is uh, one of the research that we have done during that time. So again, the left side is the RISP languages and we program everything in RISP here. And the we at that time we are able to integrate the vision processing result with the RISP environment. So here robot sees the uh, water is coming from here using the uh, 3D vision. And the, that information is transferred to the, this environment and we can infer the what's happening in the real environment and uh, do this kind of task. And after that, since we have a very nice infrastructure for uh, controlling and uh, manipulation and uh, processing, uh, it's natural for us to integrate the uh, classic AI system with, uh, with such a system. So b this is basically very simple uh, uh, planning, uh, strips-like planning systems. Uh, but if you use that, a robot can, uh, once robot knows that if the action is failed, uh, we can run the replan process and then do 
uh, task. So the goal of this robot is to make a T, but the robot is told that you have to do that until it succeeds. So this is another example. This is also, again, the uh, RISP environment, and uh, every information taken from vision system is converted here. And here, the robot is trying to uh, imitate the behavior, a uh, primitive of the behavior uh, from the observation. Uh, I think this is the latest uh, result. Uh, maybe some of you already seen in the ICORA. And uh, here is a uh, student is dancing and observing the Kinect and do some uh, dynamic filter and uh, play in the real robot. So this is very important because the student have to can have to able to dance. So if you have a student who can dance, maybe this is a very nice uh, <laughs> research topic <laughs> because other people cannot do that. And this is another uh, result. Uh, we are very happy that this uh, research is uh, received the best paper award in the ICORA. And the robot tried to uh, manipulate very heavy object. So this is a cup boat without anything. And it seems very light, but actually it's about uh, 20 kilograms. So moving this kind of the cup boat is very, very hard for the robot. And this is a, how can I say, typical or usual demonstration in our laboratory. So if you come to our laboratory, you can see this demo every time. <coughs> so the reason we can do uh, this kind of so many, uh, how can I say, research is uh, create such a nice video, uh, because we, uh, we put a lot of self-protection uh, system in the robot. So this is uh, one of them. Uh, we the system is try this system is try to estimate the average historic ratio over the time period and uh, this circle show how much load applied to each joint and if the uh, this torque is over some uh, threshold a robot try to stop the motion or uh, stop the sub motor and also here uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, self collision during experiment and uh, after that, we create very practical uh, self-collision uh, detection system. So without this kind of system, we have to be very careful on what, when we do the uh, uh, experiment. So if we have to say that, are you okay? Are you sure? Did you check in the simulation? Every time. But because we have this kind of uh, prote self-protection systems, uh, I can say that, okay, you can do anything you want. So in such a way, uh, I think we, we are able to uh, create uh, so many uh, researches that based on the HRP2 robot. And uh, from 2006, uh, new project started called the IRT. So it's a kind of a joint pro uh, project with the uh, University of Tokyo and the many big companies like Fujitsu, Panasonic, Toyota in Japan. And that this research should uh, last for more than uh, last for 10 years, but unfortunately it stopped uh, at the third year because of the there is a uh, economy regression in the U.S. in 1999, I think, and at that point uh, Toyota had uh, some trouble on the break in California, so Toyota stopped uh, supporting the project, but. Uh, company uh, do not want the humanoid robot because humanoid is very, very complicated system and they don't think that's a, uh, you know, nice, uh, pro good for his uh, product. But instead, they like uh, have some uh, sub-modules of the robot. For example, Fujitsu uh, like to have uh, visual audio systems and the Panasonic only wants the manipulation, one arm in the kitchen, and the Toyota doesn't need the leg, but they need some uh, 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 task uh, systems. So because, as again, we are able to create, we have created the very generalized uh, development system. So we just, we first create the robot model for each company and apply what we have done before to each robot. 
So there, so I think I th that is my our first, almost the first, very, uh, we can say, uh, co very close collaborative with the big companies. And the company, we have a lot of discussion on how to uh, collaborate or how to transfer the, our technology to there. And uh, some company says we need all of the software, and the other company says we don't need the software, but what we need is just a specification of the software or a patent of the software. And some other professors say, oh, you don't have to give all of the software because that is a uh, you know, history of the 20 years of the University of Tokyo, so it's the value of it is more than one million or so. But after one or two year discussion, uh, we decided to uh, open the software because it's useless, useless itself is an open source uh, software, but other part uh, developed in JSK and also developed for the remote brain project is not open source at that time. But most important thing in here, which contains a lot of robot description or motion uh, control systems, so we try to, how can I say, uh, rewrite the important part from here to other IRT use disp, and we change the license from uh, our own license to the BSD's license. So this is uh, how we are able to open the software. And uh, what we learn from this uh, how can I say, experiment experience is that even if you open the software, uh, nothing happens because I, I'm sure that none of here have ever used the use risk. And we really worry that someone take our, all of our results and do the same things as we do. And uh, we lose our, how can I say, uh, you know, property. But because without any of the support or any of the, how can I say, guidance, it's very hard to use open source software. So I think this is very good decision for us. And from 2010, I mean, the Toyota stopped the, uh, how can say, the sponsoring the U Tokyo. Uh, Euro Garage uh, started a peer to beta program. So I visited he there uh, 2009, and the robot was amazing because uh, we can drive the robot without watching the robot. So this is what we want to do in the HRP robot because we try to create a lot of lot of self-protection protec systems, but this robot already have a lot of protection system inside, so uh, the robot is just go around and we are chatting and de developing the software and uh, sometimes, oh, where is the robot? Maybe at there or there? So it's very, very nice uh, hardware. So we are very happy to join the uh, member of the uh, PR2 beta programs and the this is a first uh, bachelor thesis. Uh, he only used uh, six months to write the, his thesis uh, using combining the uh, pro uh, software and the uh, uh, iPad uh, interface. And uh, this is, uh, I think we already put this one on YouTube, and this is very famous, I think. And this is a joint work with uh, Russ uh, in the TUM uh, during summer of the 2011. And the point of this research is inferring the likely location for sandwich using the semantic uh, knowledge. But for us, this is very nice because uh, the, the joint work period is very short. It's just uh, one or two months. But since we use the same uh, road systems, it's very easy for us to communicate and also as you know, uh, we are not good at speaking English, but uh, because of we have we can share the same concept on the ROS system already, so it's very, very easy just to say like, okay, please launch this script or please ROS run this script. So this is how we communicate with each other. And I think that this uh, robot going to buy a sandwich to the subway here. And this is, I think, the one of the most famous sand, uh, subway in the world for the robotics researchers. <laughs> and everyone coming to our laboratory is very, very excited to see this uh, subway. Maybe people in there didn't know why peop, you know, foreign people are so excited <laughs> to see <that. laughs> this shop. So 
again, this is a, a system that we use for this uh, restorative. And blue mark is uh, uh, our package is mainly written in the Lisp system, and the uh, green one is a Willows, and the other package means the uh, mostly comes from the uh, TUM. And uh, we try to, how can I say, maximize the, you know, portion of the JSK packages, but actually we build most of the, build on top of the uh, very nice uh, Willows packages. And here, uh, a lot of people, when, when we join the PR2 uh, program, a lot of people ask us that, are you going to, how can I say, throw away whole of your system and uh, you know, switch your direction to ROS? But actually, we didn't. So we built on top of the ROS because, again, it's the same things that we, do in, we did in the HRP systems because we use the HRP system as a nervous or very low control layer. And what we are interested in, in top of that, so what do we can do if the robot can work very nice, so we co concentrate on the manipulation part of the human robot. And here, uh, uh, we wrote team already have a very nice uh, navigation system. So what we do is create some brain system, which is to try to infer some information or try to uh, navigate for different level maps. And so we just connect our system on top of the existing systems. So I think this is very nice uh, strategy for us. And uh, this is also uh, a PR2 ex uh, demo example. Uh, so I, this one is exactly the same behavior that we do is IRT with a Toyota robot. And at that time, with a Toyota robot, uh, we spent uh, maybe six months or seven months uh, with a few, four or five uh, master course students to create that systems. Because uh, their pressure is very so high, but here we use only two undergraduate students. This is uh, their how can I say uh, startup uh, programs, and uh, because most of the uh, function in there is already exist. So they what they de did is to uh, get used to the uh, Lisp systems and uh, uh, connect each um, action modules and. If you like, uh, this uh, program is able to uh, install from the uh, Debian package, so you can try like this. Okay, so here we t I talk about a little talk about OpenRTM ROS bridge because HIP system is uh, designed on top of the uh, OpenRTM, and uh, maybe Dr. Ando will uh, explain detail about that. But this is basically the Corba-based uh, middleware systems. But we want to use that system from the ROS uh, interface. So what we did is to create the bridge. But important part is to uh, convert OpenRTM message to ROS uh, topic service automatically. So here we create the compiled system from the IDL file, from from IDL file to uh, a service messages as well as a uh, a component or uh, some main programs like this. So in such a way, uh, uh, we are able to automatically convert from the uh, any interface of the HRP system plugin to the robot, uh, real robot, uh, no, ROS systems. So here is a, a overview of the robot system at JSK right now. Uh, we use the HRP controller for uh, every type of the robot uh, in our laboratory except PR2. And uh, what we do is uh, concentrate on how to use this uh, kind of the, uh, nice controller from the uh, brain layer. So we are interested in the tool manipulation or uh, integrated uh, intelligent user interface or motion and task planning. And uh, here is some example of the HRPC loss bridge example. Uh, if I have a time, maybe I can show you later. Uh, but uh, basically, you can uh, see this nice HRP4C robot is working. Or uh, here, you can play uh, this next stage robot with a movie. 
But actually, there is a lot of difficulty. So using system over different generation is very, very difficult because in HRP2, we have a HRP SIS, and uh, they released in 2002, and a lot of uh, university bought the HRP2. So we bought them, and we create our own, what you can say, uh, self-protection systems or a more high-level uh, control system uh, inside. But at the same time, uh, each institute uh, created their own system, own plugins, and there is no way to uh, merge such uh, effort, or there is no company that can help us to manage that. And the problem is that after that, about 10 years later, they released the new HRP4R and the new next stage robot. And uh, at that time, the HRP system at, uh, is uh, natively combined with the open team, but I can understand this system and this system is different, but this system and this system also have slight difference, so <laughs> it's kind of a nightmare. And uh, so this is why I asked the people in the AIST, and uh, he uh, kindly opened most of the software into the GitHub, and we now we try to uh, put this kind of uh, plugin into GitHub, and here we see the kind of our robot, every Kawada robot is working on the open version of the HRPCs, and also this uh, prototype one, uh, very shaft-like robot, uh, is uh, also, we apply this open source version. But after they bought by Google, uh, or before that, there is no feedback from the company, so it might be they have the another uh, HRP system. So maybe the history is back to here, and they might be a different uh, version of the HRPCs. And uh, I think that is not uh, good for the research. So this is my complaint uh, section, because when I first moved, went to the Wiro, uh, they asked us about complaint. So because complaint, every complaint can help the improvement of the system. So here is my complaint. Uh, PRC is very nice, of course. I really like that. But people in Ross Core uh, maintainer, they try to push Indigo at you. <laughs> and the PR2, I think already most of the package is already stuck in the Groovy. And the last two or three months, uh, three year, three week, I had I work very hard to uh, catechize uh, some PR2 application packages. And as for Gazebo, maybe currently I think the Hydro is the most uh, stable one. So if you want to use a ROS core system, new ROS core, and the PR2 on Gazebo, there is no solutions. So I think uh, people should understand, those people should understand that people use their hardware like to stay behind the stable systems, and also people in the PR2 try to uh, volunteer to, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, catch to the new uh, robot, new systems. And here is another, uh, my concern, because I think that PR2 beta program and the DLC challenges are two great uh, events uh, happened in the last 10 years. But I've, I think everyone noticed that everyone, every team created the same things. So here I see in the MIT's uh, technical report, they create some uh, communication systems, and also here is a communication data tool, to data link toolkit from WPI. And I attend the uh, video session of the ICRA, and the, this is uh, from MIT. They use some uh, RBs based uh, menu to localize the object primitive, and this is from MIT. I think they use a similar system on their own GUI system. So I think everyone is creating the same thing, and uh, I worry that, you know, one year later, uh, maybe there is no one is trying to merge everything, so it's going to be, uh, ha you know, same things happen to HRP2, what we had in the HRP2. And from here, I talk a little about my uh, lightning talk from the JSK laboratory. Uh, here is our latest, uh, uh, 
uh, packages. Uh, this is shows a uh, nice 2D plot like this. So this is a viewer for the complex robot, very complex robot named Kenshiro, which, ha more, which has more than 100 motors inside. And here we also use another uh, uh, vision system to uh, localize the, uh, or track the rotation of the valves like this and play on the real robot. And here is another useful ROS tools, uh, ROS pings, just to publish the uh, ping delay. And ROS patrolite is tried is just to control this patrolite section, patrolite in a, a device. And ROS Twitter, uh, it's a ROS interface a Twitter API. So if you follow this one, you can see what we are doing in the laboratory because every 10 minutes or every one hour, a robot uh, take a picture and uh, tweet. So I think this is the last part. Uh, I created the open source, no, Tokyo Open Source Robotics Kyokai Association. So this is uh, very similar to the uh, OSRF. It's a, a non-profit foundation and established in 2013. And the board member, including me and Isaac Saito, uh, we, who, are, uh, who work for the Willow Guide or intern, and the, uh, Mr. Yasuda, uh, who organize uh, management. And what we do is uh, support and maintain those community in Japan. Because I think the, I think there is very few Japanese people here, but actually the number of the Ross or visitor of Japan is uh, ranked as three, like here. And uh, after I established this uh, association, I realized that there are so many interests in Ross. Uh, people did not uh, r speak loud, or company didn't express their, in, you know, what they think, but they really, really interesting in that. So our, effort, our main mission is to transfer open source systems to company or research labs. And also we open the education the seminar. And uh, I want to incubate open source robotics business from this uh, association. So here is, I show some two products. Here is the next stage open from Kawada Robotics. And uh, This is a demonstration which I show in, which we show in the last iCross. And uh, interestingly, uh, this system, open source, I mean, cross-based next, next stage robot is already sold in five or six uh, institutes. And mostly in U Canada, uh, Spain, Singapore, and Japan. So I think this is very worldwide uh, product. And this is our new product. It's going to be uh, released in this summer, uh, which is a ROS version, ROS control version of the Denso robot. And uh, I think it's very important point of this uh, product is this is, I think I shouldn't show this one in here, but this is a, a official catalog of the Denso company. So they list the ro name of the ROS in their official catalog. So here, he says that this system supports ROS, and that you can use a lot of ROS application if you use this uh, ROS version of the Denso robot. So this company usually says that open source is not so, I can say, reliable, and we have a very nice uh, software system which developed for more than uh, 20 or 30 years. But at the same time, they are very, very interested in the ROS system or open source system. So this is why they created this one as an official product. Yeah, so this is a, a conclusion. Uh, so we are uh, try integrating uh, 20 over years property with open source uh, robotic systems. And uh, I think important part is utilizing the system of a different generation. So at some point in your future, for example, two or three years ago, uh, your robot may, might be changed or your robot may, may have different or upgraded, so we want to keep our software uh, during dif different uh, generation. And I think people like to create or use their own software, but at the same point, maybe you better to look at uh, uh, other people's software. And uh, 
some like neural system and other like the matured system, so that is very difficult uh, if you continue uh, developing the software. So I think this PR2 have kind of the problem on this uh, point. And uh, I in order to use uh, other systems, we uh, have a compiler that can com uh, automatically convert from one middleware, open attempt to ROS, and this is very, very useful for us. And Japanese ROS community seems inactive because there are very few emailing lists and very few visibility. But there might be uh, many potential users or uh, existing users and the customers and providers. So thank you very much. <laughs>